Well, I've always worked in the uh, the car business, about 20 years actually this year. So at the time I was working for a Ford Motor Company um, in the UK marketing team. And almost by chance really, I got to move into the uh, marketing communications team. And there was a vacancy there that was looking after the, the Ford sponsorship of the Champions League, uh, some motorsport. Um, and as I gradually got involved in more of those programs, I realized it was something that really interests me, that something I could really add to. And therefore I developed more of a specialism from that early opportunity, which was, you know, by, by chance that some of these things sometimes happen. Um, sports marketing is, you know, probably a huge interest to a lot of people because the, uh, you know, it follows people's passions in sport, which people pursue outside of their careers. So I think a lot of people see it as a way of uh, bringing that into the workplace. I think being a subject matter expert is the key thing. I mean, having an enthusiasm for the area that you're interested in is clearly important. But, but to know properly and research this in terms of how it fits into a company's business objectives. So companies don't invest millions of pounds in sports marketing as, at a whim. There's a, there's a science behind it. And I think an understanding of why companies use or how they use sponsorship properties, what are the key metrics, what are the, uh, the return on investments they're looking for, um, is a real key aspect to understand early on in a career. Um, and I think that would really help someone stand out, I think. I think what inspires me is that you know if you're a brand that you know in our case produces premium vehicles or you're a beer brand or whatever, um, you're fighting in a very competitive market. And I think more than anything, if you activate well and choose the right properties in sports sponsorship, it's a truly uh, unique way of engaging with your audience um, because it's through their passions. You know, people love going if they're a rugby fan to a rugby game. Obviously, if they're a football fan the same. So if you can be in that space. Um, and provide them something that's of value, um, so not something that they can get otherwise through your brand, whether that be content that you're creating on a social media or digital platform, or whether you're picking them up at the station and taking them to the grounds and, and getting your product involved, or you're providing kits to clubs on a, you know, so they can play on a Sunday morning and have the, the right, you know, the right um, tackle pads and postcards, etc. So. I think you've got to work out um, you know, where the brand can add value in particular. Uh, and that's what inspires me because then you see the results, you see people engaging with you, you see the huge numbers that you possibly can reach through, you know, through Twitter and Facebook, etc. Um, and it's very measurable. Uh, that's the thing it didn't used to be you know, you know, even five, ten years ago was the measurability of, of sports marketing, um, which is why certainly within Land Rover as an example, we're now being able to get a broader share of the marketing budget. Um, in, in sports marketing properties because we can prove the return on investment. I think it's, it's throw yourself into it particularly and, um, but, but keep a level head in terms of, I mean sometimes I've seen some people coming into sports marketing that are totally consumed about the opportunity of being in it that they kind of lose sight of why. Um, it goes back to my earlier point really about making sure that actually how it fits into the business objectives of the organization. Um, take a strategic approach. In our case, for example, we went through a whole filtering process before we landed on rugby as the property we wanted to invest in. So we understood exactly the profile of our customers, our target customer, measured what they're interested in and rugby came to the top of that list. So therefore we go after it and be really single-minded. You can't do everything. Uh, so the other piece of advice I would say, learn how to say no because as many things that we get over the desk that are tempting or seem to be interesting and valuable, you can't do everything. So a real focus on filtering, align it to the business objectives and then make your decisions on that basis. I think my proudest achievement to date is something that happened quite recently actually. Um, for the first time, both Jaguar and Land Rover brands came together in a sponsorship property, um, which was the Invictus Games that took place in, uh, in London this year, this summer which was a, almost like a Paralympic sports for um, wounded and injured and sick servicemen and women from around the world, which Prince Harry let, um, championed. And the reason why I'm proud about that is that sometimes you can find a property like that that not only kind of ticks the, the boxes in terms of reach and coverage and, and the, you know, the more cold ROI that you look at, but, but the sentiment and the positivity and doing something for society um, at, a, at a softer level was also really, really powerful. Um, so I think sometimes you've got to take a risk. That was the first time that, that games had ever taken place. Um, there weren't any metrics, there weren't any history to say, this is the audience you're going to reach, this is the, the outcome. So sometimes you've got to take a bit of gut intuition and instinct and go for it. Um, and, uh, but ultimately still at the end of it, prove, prove the results. Um, and, that, and that's the learning from that as well. I think to be a strong leader in this industry, you need to be creative. 
Um, so you need to think about and work with your creative agencies to come up with a big idea. It's no longer good enough to just buy the rights, be happy that your brand is, um, you know, is covered in television or, or, or online feeds, etc. You've got to have a big idea that's going to engage an audience. There are so many brands now that are operating in sports marketing that you've got to stand stand out. So be creative. Plan early ahead. That's the other thing I would say. You know, particularly if you've got a lot of sponsorship platforms you're operating. You know, working one, two, three years out um, in some cases isn't isn't even enough. A World Cup, you've got to start three, four years out actually, um, and make sure that you're planning and engaging all of your stakeholders within a business. Um, you know, a business of our size where you have big functions of HR, of IT, of finance. Actually, many of those functions can get benefit from from your sponsorship, um, and also internalising it within your business. We have. 30,000 employees now in the UK. A key part of our strategy for the Rugby World Cup next year is how can we internalise that sponsorship, really get our staff excited, run our own ballots for tickets, get people bringing their own children along as the mascots for the for the games, um, you know, making it really work 360 degrees. That's an interesting one. I, mean, I think in the in I don't know where it's the business of sport, but in sport itself, it's probably. Um, you know, someone like Johnny Wilkinson. Um, I've had the pleasure of meeting him a few times and his absolute single-minded determination to succeed, I think has some great parallels into the business world as well. You know, I spoke to him the other day about um, this, um, this kind of myth that I thought maybe was about him and the amount of hours he puts into his extra practicing and kicking outside of the regular training hours. And it's absolutely true to have a single-minded focus about where you want to get to and what's needed to stay at the very top of your game and do it for so long in such a physical sport as rugby, um, I, I'm hugely admiring of that.